the diagnostic approach to polyuria and polydipsia. I think this is the one most common clinical sign that we can find in uh, daily work. Okay, and when we see, when we can uh, confirm that the patient presents polydipsia, when the dog is consuming or drinking more than uh, 19 to uh, 100, sorry, 100 milliliter per kilogram a day, and a cat is uh, drinking more than uh, 50 milliliter uh, per kilogram a day. What is important to consider um, polyuria polydipsia, what kind of type of diet is eating the dog because, or the cat, because probably if a dog or cat is eating a drug diet, drink more, no? And if it's uh, eating a wet diet, uh, drink uh, low, okay? Um, the most common cause is when produce a polyuria, this polyuria produces a compensatory polydipsia, okay? Another physiological causes that can produce this polyuria, uh, polydipsia is exercise or ambient uh, heat mainly in, in, in summer. Let's talk about just a little bit about the path pathophysiology of water metabolism. If you see here, all this structure and mechanism is implicated uh, between interaction, control uh, uh, of the water consumption and the urine uh, production, mainly the kidney, the third center, pituitary gland, and hypothalamus. Okay? And it's very important to consider the osmolality or plasmatic osmolality. We have to remind that uh, sometimes the urine ha need to, to, to have an increase of molality in comparison with the uh, plasmatic osmolality. We know that this plasmatic osmolality uh, depends on mainly uh, of the concentration of sodium. For that reason, the sodium is so important to control uh, the polyuria and the, and the polydipsia, and mainly this concentration of sodium allowed to the body uh, to do different adjustment and uh, the total of uh, the concentration of the total body water. And there is a control or stabilization between the water balance, and this stabilization or balance is achieved. Um, use uh, between the water intake and water loss. Where we, uh, what, uh, where we can uh, pass the body, can, we can lose water, mainly uh, through the urine, through the feces, and respi uh, when we are uh, a dog panting, okay, or with respiration, or uh, through the skin, okay? But that is not so important like the urine and the, and the feces. What's happening when we lose water? So activate the ADH, okay? And this antidiuretic hormone uh, produced that, uh, that urine uh, concentrate, okay? And uh, at the same time, active another mechanism to increase the water intake uh, through the uh, activating the uh, third mecha mechanism, mainly uh, the, the third uh, center, okay? <coughs> and this is uh, how act the uh, antidiuretic hormone called ADH or, this, uh, or another name that we can find in the text is adenine uh, vasopressin that is uh, ABBA. This is a non-peptide, and this, con this uh, hormone control, the water resorption, mainly the kidney, this is the way that works. Uh, the, we have to remember that uh, the, the ADP is produced in the hypothalamus and is <coughs> steroids in the pituitary gland, mainly in the posterior uh, pituitary gland, okay? <coughs> And it's the stories over there. And when something happens in the body, mainly a decrease the circulating plasma volume, it's activated the atrium, the veins, and carotid sinus, 
uh, to stimulate the production or release of LPP that is stored storage in the in the pituitary gland. Okay, this LPP uh, go as as um, a stimulation of the kidney, mainly in the distal tubules and the collecting tubules. Okay, and this produce uh, that interact with B2 receptor and this two B2 uh, receptor uh, facilitate that insertion of water channel called aquam corin 2. Why we need this water channel? That there is a movement from the lumen of the tubule to the interstitium easily, okay? Like a gradient, okay? And in this way is the A ABP uh, produce that the a response of the of the of the kidney, okay? Um, later, how maintenance uh, of the money uh, of the osmotic gradient dependent counter counter, uh, counter current multiple system that we can find here that decrease the increase the molality in the uh, loop of Henle, but later. Uh, decreased again, but here is where we find uh, a higher osmolarity gradient in the tissue of the cell, <coughs> of the kidney, sorry. What is uh, essential diagnosis test in a patient with polyurethropodipsia? CBC, complete biochemistry, in CAT measured T4, total T4 and TCH, right now we are measuring the TCH in CAT, <coughs> um, uh, uh, urine analysis. When I see a dog or cat with uh, polyuropridipsia, my recommendation is to do a cure of USD, okay? Because sometimes for stress, for change of diet or something, uh, can increase the, the drinking of water and decrease in just, just in one moment, decrease the UCD. For that reason, my recommendation is that the owner brings you urine from the morning, from the evening, and from the night, okay? And you, you, and you do a cure of a, a urinary specificity, okay? Because in some time during the day, this dog or cat can concentrate or not. And that helps you for the differential diagnosis. Um, and uh, another recommendation is to do a urine culture sensitivity and measuring of the systolic blood pressure in this patient. Okay? If you see this formula, I think much we are use this formula in cats with uh, hyperosmolality uh, diabetes, okay? but have been proved that this, uh, there is not a good correlation between this formula uh, with, uh, with the real osmolality. So the gold standard is to have a machine to measure the osmolality, but uh, I have never uh, used one of, of this machine, okay? How we could uh, call uh, the urine according to the number that obtained in your uh, urinary specific gravity? This is a correct number. In dogs over 1.30, uh, we have to um, cut 1.35, we have to call correctly concentrated, okay? Between uh, 12 and 30, we have to call moderate concentrated, and uh, between 8 and 12, that is isostenuria, that's the plasma osmolality is the same that uh, urine osmolality. A low to 1.8 is when we call hypostenuria, okay? And this uh, phenomenon mainly we use for the Addison, okay? When a dog uh, comes totally dehydrated with the additional, additional crisis and you do a urinalysis and you find it incorrectly diluted, okay? There is not a good uh, physiologic mechanism to respond. To the to the shock. This is uh, you can find this algorithm uh, in the in the last version of edition of the of the Ettinger, and mainly that's what we're going to talk about. But 
uh, when we have a patient with, uh, with polyurapolydipsia, we have to check, or the first time we have to check is the USD. Okay? But it's very important to check the presence of glucose. Okay? You have to remember that glucose has a higher osmotic uh, capacity and can increase the, the USD in, in the patient. It's a false increase. Okay? And if you don't find the glucosuria, you have to all these causes to try to rule out, and we're, we're not talking about a little bit. And all the time, it's very important to consider if this patient is receiving any kind of treatment. How you see here a list of different uh, medications that can produce you polyurapolydipsia that we have to ask to the owner if the patient is receiving any kind of treatment, okay? That's with asterisks are the more common, and for example, phenobarbital sometimes it forgets that can produce polyurapolydipsia, okay? Maybe you have to think something happening in the liver for the phenobarbital, or even thick or tar for the tri for the treatment of the Addison when you are using a higher dose can induce jetrogenic grief uh, and, and polyurapolydipsia in a patient with Addison that is not controlled. Okay? And this is a <laughs> table you can find, or oh, this is a memory for me and try to teach uh, to my resident. When we see a dog uh, with a hypothermic urine, mainly we have to move uh, in this uh, differential diagnosis. Okay? We're going to talk about different types of polyapolydipsia. One of them is uh, osmotic diuresis. The pathophysiology is um, mainly is increase the number of concentration of solid in the tubular filtrate, and that solute uh, attracts water, and for that reason, increase uh, the water excretion from the from the from the kidney. Okay, and this produces a polyuria, and secondary produce a compensatory polydipsia. Okay, what uh, what causes or which causes are more common of osmotic diuresis? The more common diabetes. Mellitus, okay? I forgot to, to put it mellitus, okay? CKD, uh, post obstructive diuresis, that I'm talking just a little bit uh, in the first talk. Medications, diuretic, meliflurosamide, manitol, uh, and the fluid. You can induce the polyuria, osmotic polyuria, because remember, this is salt, okay? And another kind of glucosuria, more and frequent uh, primary renal glucosuria of Falconi syndrome. What we can find in, in diabetic, we can find normal concentration of the urine, but it's false, remember, because the glucose uh, has a high weight, okay? Hyperglycemia, glucosuria, and produce desmotic diuresis, and the renal threshold for, 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 for dogs is lower in comparison to cats. And you have to remember that some cats for stress can increase the level of glucose of, of, uh, or glycemia over, uh, over 1300, okay? So we have to differentiate all the time in cats that this glucosuria or hyperglycemia is induced by stress or induced that this cat presents a really diabetes mellitus, okay? And the renal glucosuria, primary renal glucosuria, is a very uh, uncommon disease. And you can find a normal glycemia, okay, uh, in the normal glycemia, but you find uh, glucosuria, okay? Do you have, or how many cases of leptospirosis do you have here in Romania? Is frequent or not? No. Really? Okay, and Bavestia? Okay, okay. I was thinking any kind of infectious disease you have to have. Okay, Bavestia. I love Bavestia. It's very weird in Spain. Um, so, um, sometimes can be, or you can find um, secondary glucosuria, okay? And 
it's normal the glucose in the in the blood, but in the urine you can find uh, um, glucose, and you have to think in mainly that secondary uh, renal glucosuria is more is most more is, uh, is more common than primary glucosuria, and one of the case is a patient with CKD, leptospirosis and leishmaniosis. Okay, and sometimes babesiosis can be a damage only in the tubule before the glomerulus and induce you as well uh, glucosuria. Okay, how the CKD can induce you uh, a polyurethropedipsia? There is a different mechanism, mechanism, but this is the main mechanism. But um, here, more the patient, or, or it's very common to find a patient that is is a stenotic uh, urine, and that I say before, uh, the concentration, the molality of the urine is the same uh, of the plasma, okay? And uh, that produce an osmotic um, poly, poly, polyuria, okay? And what we can check uh, on in the blood work, we can check to do uh, CBC, obviously uh, biochemistry, including the, the creatinine, urea, urea, and SDMA. You used, you used to use the SDMA, okay, yes, for and calcium, abdominal ultrasound. And uh, I do all the time urine analysis with urine culture and sensitivity, and don't forget, measure all the time the blood pressure in this patient. What's happened in the patient with CKD? So, uh, the nerve from that maintained in the leaf, in the, in the kidney, increase or try to increase the compensatory glomerular filtration and increase uh, the distal tubular. Uh, flow rates uh, in the kidney. That means that the urine is passing away very quick and that is not allowed or there is not so much time to reabsorb the urea to the intertissium. So the cat or the dog is peeing urea and urea has a huge osmotic capacity. So uh, attracts water. Okay? And at the same time, the urea is very important to maintain the uh, medullary uh, concentration gradient. And if you don't have urea, that gradient is lost. So, again, the gradient or the passive gradient, the loss of, of molality and hydromolality doesn't happen for this reason. And the dog and cat pee a lot. Okay? And that is one of the explications, but the main explication for why a patient with CKD present uh, polyurethropedipsia. The post obstructive diuresis that I'm talking just a little bit, what's happened? That increased the elimination again the, uh, the urea, because the, 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 the concentration in the blood of urea is so high that again the compensatory mechanism to try to reabsorb all that urea that is present in the in a blocked cat is not enough, and for that reason, is peeing urea, okay? And again, this urea attracts water and produces a post-obstructive diuresis. What's happened? That this diuresis can long seven days, ten days. So before one of the recommendations in that cat with uh, fluid is no send home till you control the polyuria, but if you give uh, a cat uh, so much fluid, urine so much fluid, so when I see this post-obstructive diuresis uh, more than three days, mainly in, in for, for another cat, not uh, in your <coughs> society, uh, I try to decrease the rate of fluid to try to correct for myself, well, for the, uh, the cat itself, correct uh, this compensative or post-obstructive diuresis. Another mechanism is the acquired nephrogenic diabetes. <coughs> this one, uh, we know that this tubule and collective ducts uh, is are enabled to respond to ADP. Okay? This happened, the most common uh, cause is secondary. Okay? This one is more real, the primary or congenital nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. 
here there is a or there are reduced response to ADP in the distal tumor and collected duct mainly because the receptor are blocked there are or there is an interference for the touch uh, the ADP to the to the receptor and we have to remember that ADP is produced that the alcoprene channel appear in the tumor okay so if I don't have ABP, I don't have a proper channel. Okay? And another way, uh, the kidney are enabled to maintain the smoky gradient between the tubular fluid and medullary interstitium, and in this way, it's lost the medullary hypertonicity, uh, like a, a similar to the happening in the smotic uh, uresis. Well, which are the causes of secondary nephrogenic diabetes insipidus? <clears throat> Mainly endotoxins, hypercalcemia, hyperadrenocorticism that produce a reduced response to the IBP. And another cause is lost dosmotic gradient, is hypoadrenocorticism, liver failure, hypokalemia, CKD again, but uh, we're going to explain uh, this one uh, again, and diuretic drugs. Maybe. Sorry. Why a pyometra present polyurapididipsia? Okay, we have here the answer. If so, someone of you is making this question, okay? And um, mainly is the Escherichia coli. The Escherichia coli is the main cause. This uh, has endotoxin that has uh, able to block the receptor, okay? The ADP receptor, and it is this way that produced the the, the, the polyuria. So this is acquired the fragility diabetes mellitus, okay? And we know everybody knows it's more common in, in, in all the entire all the, the entire females that the estro was present three weeks or four weeks before or two months before. Uh, can be open and closed and all the tests that you can do in pyometra. Pyonephritis and again Depends on the kind of bacteria that is infected. That this bacteria is, for example, again, Escherichia coli can block <coughs> the receptor, but another bacteria can produce endotoxin and as well produce this uh, ABP action, no able uh, in the tumor to produce the aquaporine channel, and at the same time can produce uh, the infection of countercurrent mechanism uh, or affect the countercurrent mechanism that the that the, the water with low osmolality go to a place with high osmolality is affected as well. In these cases one of the the, the to obtain the diagnosis the most common test that we do uh, is cytosynthesis but one of you do pyrosynthesis Okay, it's not common. Just I mean, my experience is some patient I, I have done when I see a dilated uh, pelvis and I don't find the cows in the blood. I mean, the, the culture in the blood is negative or no ground anything. So it's when I do the paleo uh, paleo synthesis because it has more risk than uh, cystosynthesis like a bleeding. Okay. Hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia, again, the calcium interferes with the uh, ADP uh, receptor in the tubules, and the calcium uh, itself can damage uh, the receptor and block and damage the receptor. So, at the same time, decrease. Uh, the transportation of the sodium and, chlor uh, and chloride uh, to the medullary interstitium. So, in all this way, it's affecting mainly for the 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 this destruction of the ADP on the osmo osmotic uh, uresis and uh, can produce uh, the polyuria polydipsia. For this reason, patients with prim primary or secondary hypercalcemia can present polyurea polydipsia, okay? For the 
All this time, one of their recommendations is measure the ionic calcium. Even I measure in patients that have total calcium over the upper limit, okay, on the the, the range, okay, in the in the upper range, in the upper limit, I measure the the ionic calcium in patient with uh, polyaporipsia because uh, there is no good uh, correlation between calcium total calcium, uh, you have to remember that the calcium can be joined into proteins and albumin, uh, carbonate and the ionic. And what, what is the better to measure or can produce you the problem is the ionic, okay? And for, for that you need, uh, you need a special machine but you can have this machine in your, your clinic or your, your hospital. When I see a dog or cat with, uh, with uh, hypercalcemia, here's a table with all the differential diagnoses since the most common to the most real or miscellaneous causes. And we, when we see a patient with hypercalcemia, we have to think in different tumors like lymphoma, anasal adenocarcinoma, pancreatic adenocarcinoma, etc. CKD and just basorum. You have this kind of parasite here in Romania? No? Okay. Addison disease, don't forget the Addison can produce uh, hypercalcemia and idiopathic in cats, but in cats you have to uh, rule out all the causes of hypercalcemia to confirm the idiopathic hypercalcemia. And uh, yes, and this is picture from, from where I'm working with uh, we diagnose a uh, fungal disease. The granulomatous disease can produce as well um, hypercalcemia. Hyperadrenocort disease what is the one of the most common causes of polyrapolidipsia and how this is produced. The cause is not clear right now, but there is thinking that the glucocorticoid is set a direct uh, interference over the ADP uh, receptor for in this way produce and acquire nephrogenic diabetes in situ. But at the same time, the cortisol can uh, affect the production or the storage of ADP in the brain. And there is less quantity or amount of ADP present to go to try to. Uh, Joint to the receptor, okay. And uh, another hypothesis is that there is a direct effect of the cortisol over the glomerular filtration rate increasing, okay. More than 85 percent of dogs with USD uh, low than uh, 1.20, and the urine is moderately concentrated to hypotenuric urine. Okay. How can produce this? Mainly is when a compression of the pituitary tumor. We have to remind that the most common causes are microadenoma, but <coughs> microadenoma. This microadenoma can compress uh, the posterior pituitary and produce. And this, this is a picture of patients of mine with polyarthritis, and this is a macroadenoma. And maybe for the diagnosis, we I, we choose I, we choose uh, the cortisol creatinine ratio when I don't have so much suspect or this this is low in my list of differential diagnosis. But what test do you prefer to do in in dogs with hyperandrocorticism? You have your hand with low dose dexamethasone stimulation test. Dose, uh, two, three, three, four, five, six, okay. And the ACTH stimulation test? Yes. Everybody? Yes. Okay, broad answer. Why? What's happened? The sensitivity uh, of, the, of the ACTH stimulation test is only of uh, 70 percent, 75 percent sensitivity. Okay, the specificity is very good. So, 
uh, what's happened when we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we use the low dose dexamethasone stimulate, uh, suppression test? Sorry. The sensitivity is between 90% till 100%. Okay? But <coughs> specificity could be very high if you use in an adequate patient. Okay? If you use this test in a patient that don't have all the typical clinical signs of cushion, can give you a false positive. Okay? So if you <coughs> have to choose uh, all the clinical signs of the dog, the better test is this one because the specificity is over 90% as well. Okay? When I use the stimulation test, when the low dose the dexamethasone suppression test is not clear, or if very important to do uh, the test in a sick dog, okay? Because in a sick dog, if you do if you do the low dexamethasone um, uh, low dose dexamethasone uh, suppression test, could be give you false positive. In a sick animal, I use the stimulation test, okay? And another cause is the liver failure. The liver failure, and again, decrease the concentration of urea in the blood, and this allow a loss of medullary hypertonicity, and in this way produce an acquired nephro nephrogenic uh, diabetes insipidus. At the same time, the ammonium exerts an uh, uh, effect over the, the hypothalamus, and mainly another substance. You have to remind that we have the hepatosis sun, the only is not only the ammonium that can produce the hepatic encephalopathy. There is another amino acid uh, substance like a benzoic uh, gasoline and something, uh, a lot of another substance. And this substance <coughs> acts like a toxin and produce or affect the hypothalamus and produce the polyamidipsia. Okay? What the kind of test you have to do uh, in this patient with liver, mainly the dynamic, dynamic bile acid test and measure the ammonia, uh, if you can measure in your in your clinic or, or hospital. And in, in many cats with, uh, you suspect the cholangitis, uh, we obtain mainly bile cytology and liver cytology and culture of the bile. Okay, and in patients with liver disease, dogs mainly, and uh, some cats, I do I prefer to do the histopathology measuring the copper and do a mix of bile with tissue to send to, to culture and sensitivity. Hypoderenocorticism helps produce polyrepolydipsia, and again, 30% of dogs with Addison present hypercalcemia. And another way, a dog present a higher concentration of potassium <coughs> hypercalemia and present a compensatory hyponatremia. And hyponatremia produces a loss of hormotic radiant, mainly the renal medullary tonicity. And for that reason, the urine is more diluted. Okay? <coughs> and uh, the polyurea is presented in a 20% of dogs with uh, Addison, and mainly uh, you have to do the you have to be uh, uh, attempt to see the sodium potassium ratio, mainly uh, less than 27, okay, or even more better correlation, less uh, 23, and to do the ACTH stimulation test, okay. Another cause is hypokalemia. Hypokalemia uh, <coughs> mainly in cats is secondary to renal disease, okay, and. And again, it produces a low response for part of the tube to the to the ADH and decrease the number of aquaporin two and then disappear the channel of water and interfere the ADH secretion in the pituitary directly the level of potassium. But okay, it's central brain. Uh, and uh, polyaporesia in patients with hypokalemia, exclusive hypokalemia. Uh, for example, secondary uh, <coughs> uh, lipi uh, lipidosis is not common to find uh, polyapolydipsia, but in burmese cat that is not very frequent 
uh, breed in Spain is more frequent to find it in UK. K percent hyperbaric hypokalemia and percent polyapolydipsia. And hyperthyroidism, the pathophysiology of the hyperthyroidism is not clear at the currently, and increase the renal flow and decrease the renal medullary tonicity and decrease the water reception and for this reason produce uh, the produce the the polyuria. But there is a stimulus in the, of the brain is stimulated directly for the T4 and produce a psychogenic polydipsia, okay? A primaria polydipsia. Or even you, we have to remind that this cat leak a lot, even uh, take out the, the hair because they feel so much warm in the in the body and this warmth can produce lots of water. Okay? We're going to talk a little bit about the diabetes uh, insipidus. Do you know why it's called insipidus? Okay, this is very clear because in the old time, uh, the, the doctor to difference between mellitus and insipidus tastes the urine. And the, when it's mellitus, the glucose is sweet. And this kind of diabetes doesn't have any kind of taste. And for this reason, it's called insipidus. Okay? It's a little bit gross, but. Okay? And here we know that there is a clear vasopressin deficiency, mainly the, the affecting uh, that interaction between ABP and the distant tubular and, uh, and the collecting duct cells. And again, decrease for this reason the aquaporin tool and the, canal, uh, the channel of water. And the water is not reabsorbed in the ductal, uh, ductal tubular and the collecting ductal, this is a tubular part, uh, sorry, uh, can produce at the same time not induce that the sodium and chlorine goes into the interstitial. For that reason, there is a hypotonic tubular fluid. And um, at the same time, occur a hypotonic urine. All of these produce an increased water intake due to uh, increased uh, desmolality in the blood. Causes of uh, central diabetes insipidus uh, can be um, mainly when it's affected the hypothalamus or posterior uh, pituitary. Remember that is done is where produce and restores the ADP. Could be idiopathic in young patient in young patient. And neoplasia that affected the hypothalamus or pituitary gland in all patients, metastasis, sees a lymphocytic hypophysity that is very uncommon uh, in dogs. Another cause are trauma, mainly in cats with a skull fracture, vascular accident, or the surgery that you can do in, in UK or in, in Netherlands. That, uh, as a treatment for the cushion disease and for the acromegaly that take out the, the pituitary gland. And all this produce a marked polyuria with the compensatory polydipsia, could be acute or progressive, uh, could be associated with neurological sign, uh, and the diagnosis is for exclusion, okay? And this patient then to present uh, hypernatremia. Okay, when the, we exclude all the causes of, of the central diabetes, we are thinking that we are from cases of uh, central diabetes insipido or nephrogenic diabetes insipido, primary, okay? Or psychogenic polydipsia, we can propose to do uh, the test that everybody knows called water deprivation test. How many of you do like to do this test? Or have experience with this test? <coughs> Nobody? Okay, good. I like that because this is a test that I don't like so much, but we're going to explain you just a little bit, okay? Um, this test uh, uh, 
uh, we have to, when we suspect in these three diseases, we have to do uh, that USG curve that I mentioned before. I prefer that the owner bring me from home uh, the, the urine. And uh, when the, the patient presents hypostenuria, uh, I am thinking about that. I, I do the desmopressin trial test, or I do the um, modificate water deprivation test. We want to talk about that. Prior to the water deprivation test, uh, this is called modified because we have to decrease the, um, the medullary washout because most of the patient has a long time drinking a lot of water and peeing a lot. So this produces uh, a, a consequence called medullary washout. To decrease this medullary washout that sometimes uh, not uh, allow to concentrate the urina only for, 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 for medullary washout, we have to decrease uh, slowly the amount of water that the patient is drinking. Okay? It's important when you start to decrease uh, this restrict, uh, or with restriction of water, start only with 10% every one or two days. Okay? until the patient, mainly dogs, uh, is drinking 100 ml kilo per day, okay? Different, uh, off uh, offering water in different time uh, a day. And you have to monitor, monitor uh, the weight and US, uh, USG, sodium, and the patient attitude, okay? And for that reason, I ask to the owner, bring to me every day or every two days, okay? If the patient presents uh, increase uh, of the USG with the restriction of water, we stop the, the proof and we now go to the second step. Or if the patient presents anxiotemia, we cannot to do uh, the deprivation, uh, uh, water deprivation, deprivation test. Okay? When you count the dog to do the deprivation test, we have to come fasting, uh, minimum for 12 hours, okay? The clinical sign of dehydration or acetemia. We uh, hospitalize to the patient in the morning and put it uh, in a ca catheter to empty all the bladder and start to measure the production and, uh, and USC. And if you can have measure the urine osmolality, that I don't have experience with that. And we have to measure every two hours. Uh, levels of creatinine, sodium, okay, e, and the clinical sign. If the, uh, the patient presents dehydration, uh, uh, lost uh, weight, but because probably uh, is dehydrated too much, and levels of creatinine and sodium is increasing or not. <coughs> Why we have to measure this? Because if the patient, when they start the water deprivation test, deprivation test, you are not allowed to, allowed to get up drinking anything, okay? And if the patient presents isotemia or hypernatremia, uh, depression, apathy, uh, uh, behavior changes, obnubilation, um, weight loss, or increase the dehydration more than 5%, you have to stop the, the test because it's very dangerous for the dog, okay, because remember, it's uh, decreased, uh, increased suddenly uh, the, the level of sodium can dehydrate the neuron and produce uh, and brain damage uh, for forever and even uh, can die the patient, start to seizure and die. So for that reason it's important to measure every two hours two hour, and for that reason it's, it's a test that I don't like so much. What happens if the patient uh, resists the, 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 the water privation and the privation and the, the hydration is less than 5%? Uh, is in that moment uh, when I apply the drop of uh, desmopressin, okay? Desmopressin acetate. In that way, uh, again, empty urine collecting bag. Measure the use and the uh, urine and what you said, what you a measure creatinine sodium uh, in the in the in the patient. And 
uh, after you finish uh, the test, um, you have to replace that fluid that had lost in the heat trace of the patient maybe in two hours, in monitor very uh, close to the patient for four hours more. And after the two, uh, two uh, re re rehydrate, rehydrate to the patient is when you can offer water and leave it to And how we can uh, translate the result mainly. When I see a patient with uh, diabetes insipidus, more of the patient uh, achieve less than 5% of the hydration at 4 hours. And you apply the drug and you see an increase uh, quickly of the, uh, of, the, of the concentration of the ur uh, urinary specific gravity. Uh, instead of, if you see, uh, although, if you see the primary nephro uh, nephrogenic diabetes insipid, you have to remember this patient doesn't have receptor for the AVP, so if I, if I put it, uh, synthetic IVP, doesn't work and doesn't happen, so the, the urinary specific is still hypothetic in all the tests. And for another way, the, um, on the other hand, the primary uh, uh, polydipsia can present a mild response to the, to the when you apply the, the drug, but may, most of them, when you do the gradual a restriction of water, uh, you see an improve uh, of the urinary specific density, even when it's achieving the seven percent. What's happened in the in the in this dog with primary uh, polydipsia? The test can be too long, too too long. Uh, some dogs can be aggressive when you uh, take out the water. And this is the protocol that I prefer, and it's not danger for the for the patient. Is to apply uh, the drops. I prefer the drop and the tablet because I have seen in some studies that are more effective in comparison to the tablet. Tablet I prefer to use in cat because the drop can produce conjunctivitis and be a little noisy for 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 cat and so from, from dogs, okay? And uh, in, when I do the test, uh, uh, usually I use two drops, okay? And you have to measure uh, the USG uh, every, every 24 hours uh, during five to seven days. I prefer seven days because some dogs uh, delay to, to respond, okay? Um, when, how, how could could see or read uh, the result or how or, or how to to know that the patient is responds to the to the vasopressin? If there is a marked decrease on water intake in days five to seven in comparison with day one. Increase the urinary specific gravity may increase a fifty percent more than the baseline. Okay, not all the patient you can go into the normal limit, okay, that is important to remind. And you have to remind that congenital nephrogenic diabetes insipidum doesn't respond to the uh, synthetic uh, uh, vasopressin, but you can find a small response with basic discussion and sometimes it's very difficult to differentiate between primary or central diabetic insipidum with cushion. For that reason, it's more important to do all the tests for drill out the, the cushion, the echography the one we were talking about before. And psychogenic polydipsia has a partial response as well. Okay? When we have a treatment uh, with central diabetes insipidum, we have to try achieve uh, the minimal effective doses with uh, with the tablet or with the drug, okay? And the injection vasopressin is not available right now in, in Europe. And in some patients, uh, you can use uh, uh, propamide, uh, 
you have to remind this is a treatment for the diabetes mellitus in human beings and this increased the ADH stimulation in the renal medulla and removed antagonists and increased the sodium chloride absorption in the renal medulla. Okay? But in veterinary it's not a good result in the study, but it's another option. Uh, regarding congenital nephrogenic diabetes in cibidos, uh, mainly it's very weird there is only this article published many many years ago in a family of Siberian Husky so this is disease that you have to consider in Siberian Husky uh, mainly um, uh, you can try to use uh, the uh, water <coughs> deprivation test again that we talked about and rule out all the causes of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and the tr treatment is Yes, it's diuretic, mainly um, is the chlorothiazide, and this one is a paroxysmal effect uh, that uh, increased the elimination of sodium uh, 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 in the urine, and in this way, uh, the total body concentration of sodium decreased and reactive all the mechanisms compensatory to, in, to try to absorb the more quantity uh, of water in the ductal uh, tubules. And that's it, thank you very much.